In this lecture, we're going to look at the muscles of the thorax and breathing. The muscles of the thorax that assist breathing. Respiratory muscles alter the size of the thoracic cavity, which affects the pressure in the lungs, and that determines whether we inhale or exhale. And the diaphragm is the most important respiratory muscle. Other important respiratory muscles include the external and internal intercostal muscles, and there's also a number of accessory muscles used in forced breathing. So if we take a look here, and you can see that uh, we're looking at a cross section, we can see the diaphragm. Okay, and uh, again, the diaphragm is the main muscle of respiration. It's typically dome shaped when it's relaxed. When it contracts, it flattens out. What this does then is it increases the volume within the thoracic cavity. And as Boyle's Law says, when you have an increase in volume, you're going to have a decrease in pressure. And so that's what's going to draw air in. When the um, diaphragm relaxes, it goes back to its dome shape, which then makes the volume of the chest cavity a lot less or smaller. And pressure is going to increase with a, a decrease in volume. So Boyle's Law is pretty easy to remember. Um, it states that volume and pressure are inversely proportionate. With an increase in volume, you get a decrease in pressure. With a decrease in volume, you get an increase in pressure. And that's pretty much how we bring air in and out of the lungs. Okay, and if you notice on this diaphragm, there are some, uh, let's see, the esophagus pokes through. Um, the aorta goes through kind of at the back of the, the diaphragm. Uh, here's the inferior vena cava, and we have the central tendon. Now, the esophagus going through the diaphragm right at the end of that is going to be the stomach. Sometimes you get a weakening right there, and uh, we would call this the diaphragmatic hiatus, and so a portion of the stomach can actually bulge up above the diaphragm, and we would call that a hiatal hernia. Looking at some of the other uh, muscles of inspiration and expiration, again, we have our external intercostals and internal intercostals. Remember, costal refers to ribs, and these are in between the ribs. Now, when you go out and order barbecued ribs, that's what you're eating, intercostals. Okay, so um, we have other accessory muscles as well, such as the scalenes, for instance. Scalenes, we have an anterior, middle, and posterior scalene muscle. Again, these are only used usually when someone's in respiratory distress. Uh, for instance, a long-term COPD patient, like someone with uh, kind of advanced emphysema. You'll see them sometimes kind of leaning up against the table and using their neck muscles to try to pull up a little bit uh, more on the ribs and increase that volume just a little bit to draw in a, just a touch more air. So you're, they don't do a lot. They're not going to bring in a lot of air, but, you know, a little bit uh, sometimes will help. Now, typically, inspiration or inhalation uh, requires muscles. And those muscles are going to be the diaphragm, mostly. So when the diaphragm contracts, as we see here, the diaphragm flattens out, as I mentioned before, increasing the volume within the chest cavity. Uh, but the external intercostals, they contract and they help to lift the ribs up. And if you're trying to look at the difference between the internal and external intercostals, let's just go back again. Uh, the external intercostals, the direction that they're moving is like if you're putting your hands inside the pockets of a hoodie. They're going in that direction. Whereas the internal intercostals go in the opposite direction. And so external intercostals and diaphragm are going to be your main muscles of inspiration. And if you need to try to pull in more air, like you're out of breath, you've been running, or again, I've talked about like COPD, 
then you're going to use the scalenes and even the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Again, all of that trying to just pull up on the ribs, increase the volume. Now, exhalation typically is passive because there's a lot of elasticity within those muscles and within the tissues of the chest cavity. And so when the diaphragm relaxes, it goes back up into the dome shape and all that elasticity of the alveoli, the air sacs in the lungs, and the elasticity of the chest wall will basically bring the ribs back down and help push air out. But occasionally we need to exhale a little more strongly. For instance, if you're going to blow up a balloon or blow out a candle or something like that. So we need to be able to exhale a little bit more forcefully. And that's where the internal intercostals come in. And they're going to pull the ribs down. Uh, also, the abdominal muscles like the rectus abdominis, your internal, external, and transversus uh, abdominus muscles. External oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominus. That's going to be used for forceful exhalation.